Welcome back to another edition of Myth Badger Videos. This time around, we're going to build a rack and pinion gear. Let's go ahead and take a look at the parts because we've got a few new parts that we're going to be using for this one. First, we've got our main platform that we've been using for all our gears. We are going to need a um, rail here, and we're going to use a bit longer rail. Please make sure you grab the rail in which the sides angle inward a bit. Um, to go along with that, we're also going to use our slide truck here. And unlike we did in the lead screw or lead screw, um, in this one, instead of this piece moving around, we're going to actually anchor this down so that the rail slides around. To attach to that, we're going to need to use some of these rack gears. There are going to be these, um, this kind of these thin single tooth, single row of teeth rack gears. On the bottom, there's going to have three screw holes, and we're going to get four of these today. To connect with this, we're going to use the uh, small little 12 tooth gear here. And then we obviously need a handle to be able to turn the gear. Now, we're going to also be using a thin um, gear box on this one. Uh, that's going to be to help hold the small gear into place. We're going to need an axle. I'm just going to use a short little three inch axle on that one. Now, since we have the axle, we obviously are going to need our three hole spacers and a set of rivets to connect it. We're also going to need to use um, some uh, locking collars. I've actually got four locking collars here, even though I normally might use um, two because we're going to be locking things down pretty tightly around the system and we're going to use these a little bit as spacers. Now I'm also going to actually have some of these uh, larger uh, spacer collars and we're going to use four of those and that's going to help to elevate our slide truck in our assembly. I'm also going to get a couple of these um, so short little bolts and kept nuts to go with them. I'm going to need two of those to anchor this down. And then I'm also going to use some larger, uh, um, some larger bolts here. We're actually going to be using our um, 3 8 inch bolts. And I do not need kept nuts for them because what we're going to do is we're going to use these to help hold these in place. Now there is one more piece we're going to need and that's what this is for. The screw holes for the um, rack of gear do not accept the standard size um, bolt that we use. They need actually a different bolt. We're going to need to use some machine screws or motor screws as they're sometimes called. Now these are, um, uh, they're a smaller gear, but if we took, take something that's got an equivalent size on this, we notice that um, if we look at them, the machine screw is actually, it's the top one here, and of course now my focus doesn't want to work. The top one here, you see that it's actually thinner, which is what we need to make this work. So we're going to actually, since we have four of these, we're going to grab a handful of these and set them aside. Now I often keep them separated from everything else because if you're not careful, it's very easy to throw these in with these bolts and then it becomes kind of a pain to dig them all back out. So I, I kind of keep them separated in an in a old pill bottle just to, so I know where they're at. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, there are a couple pieces that it's helpful to get into place first. Um, the first one we're going to want to do is actually um, we want to figure out where we're going to be placing this because once we figure out the placement of this, that's going to help us to inform the rest of the parts. I'm not going to um, well, I guess I could anchor this down um, right away. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find a spot here and I'm going to move one row in. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and anchor that down. So I'm going to use my short bolts and um, put this into place. So kept nut on the bottom and just kind of lightly get that piece on there. And we're going to put the other one here to anchor both ends of this down so that, that way it doesn't twist around as much. Okay, so um, I've got that into place and um, I should probably go ahead and tighten the top in uh, while I'm holding the kept nut, would obviously be better technique. 
So tighten that down a little bit. And now what I want to do is I want to figure out the position of these two objects. Now I'm going to place them so there's one of these holes on the base plate between the gearbox and, and one of the slide trucks. But what I'm also going to do is I'm also going to put two of these underneath to help elevate it a bit. That's where these three eighth inch um, screws come into place. So I'm going to feed one of these up and through it and I'm going to place um, the collar on and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this in. Now if you watched our lead screw you know that the slide trucks can be a little tight trying to fit this in so I'm going to actually have to kind of really work to tighten this down. Um, I do not want to attach a kept nut to the top however and I do not want the bolt sticking out to the top because it'll prevent this from sliding around properly because we're going to have to bolt these down to the rail and when we do that we're going to have um, screw heads up here, bolt heads up here and it will run into these bolts. So I, I'm using the 3 8 so they don't go all the way through. So I'm going to carefully position that there and then come up through this opening here and then I can tighten that down on the other side. And I want one on either sides to help hold this because we're going to be holding a lot of weight on this um, and we don't want it twisting around. So we're going to use two of these for each slide truck that we're doing. So let's go ahead and get the other one attached. Um, as you can see, it is possible to do this alone, but I'm, hopefully you can also see that if you had a second person to help hold all this up, it would potentially make this a bit less awkward to try and attach everything. So, like with a lot of our gears, it is possible to do it alone. That's, I mean, that's what you've seen me doing in all these videos, is I'm doing this without anybody holding it, but it's a bit more awkward and it definitely comes with practice. If this is the first time you're going to build one of these, it might be a little awkward to do that until you've um, been doing this for a while. Okay, so now that I have these in place, um, what we can see is we can see how this just slides through, which is what we want. So this is what the action that we're going to end up uh, creating here will be doing. Okay, so now let's go ahead and set this aside for a second and let's get these attached here. So I'm just going to pick a spot and I'm going to line up um, the openings here for the bolts. I'm going to line those up with a hole and then I'm going to use my little machine screws to do this. Uh, I really, I can do three for each one, but I think I'm just going to use um, two for each one. And I am going to need to use my, the same uh, L key, the same wrench that I would use for the locking collars. So I need to use that 5 64th instead of the 3 32nd. Um, there's really no benefit for short term gain on this in trying to put three in. Um, the only reason I'm doing two is so that they're not shifting around as much on here. So um, putting a third one in might seemingly add more stability, but for what we're doing, it's not a big deal. Um, I would consider doing that if I was making something for competition use or if I was making something that need to have more long-term durability, not something that I'm going to build and then eventually tear apart rather quickly. Um, so there's two done. You can kind of see where this is, takes a little more time to put all these pieces into place. Um, but hey, you know, that's going to be the case anytime we build something. It's going to take a little bit of time, a little bit of effort to put it all together. Um, you can also see how if I had a second person, while I'm doing this, a second person could be attaching this, um, attaching these pieces all together, which would be another time-saving element as well. A, a good reason why uh, having two people when you're doing these gears can be helpful. Okay, last one here, and then we can get this into position. Okay, tighten that down. 
And I don't know if I got that last one tightened as well as I'd like. So let's check that. Nope, a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this into place. And now you see why I don't want those bolts or those kept nuts here to stick through because it would prevent this from working. Okay, so that leaves only one piece we need to worry about, and that's the position of uh, this gear. So I'm just going to kind of line this up to see which hole, and it looks like I want to use the second row down. So I'm going to start feeding this through. Now when I start feeding this through, on the inside I'm going to put one locking collar, then I'm going to put my gear, then I'm going to put another locking collar and run that all the way through. And I'm going to be putting my handle here, so I want it sticking out more on this side and only enough in here to attach a locking collar on the outside over here. So let's go ahead and lock that down. And um, I'm going to lock this one down. Let's lock this one down. And let's add one more. And I realize now what I missed doing. So um, I'm going to take this one off. I've at least got the inside locked down, um, but I missed something here. If you can see if you can figure out what it is of my parts I missed. Mm, you may have noticed I missed my three hole spacers. And why would I miss that? But I did. So I'm just going to go ahead and attach these here on the outside. Um, because that's going to help add a little bit more stability to the axle. So why would I forget that? But it's an easy thing to happen. Um, it would not be the first time that I haven't been paying attention and I've done that. So I need just to loosen all this up so I have enough space for the locking collar. There we go. Now I can put that locking collar into place. Tighten that one down. Tighten that one down and add one to the outside, and I'm just about done. Now all I need is a handle, and we have a rack and pinion gear. So thank you for watching. Feel free to hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all of our tutorials here at Myth Badger Videos.